Welcome everybody uh, to this year's uh, 2019 launch event at Javelin Technologies. We're going to cover off some of the 250 plus enhancements that come with every release of SOLIDWORKS. My name is Scott Ligge. I'm the Technical Solutions Manager here at Javelin Technologies and with me today is... My name is Colin Murphy and I'm a Senior Applications Expert here at Javelin. Now before we get started into the new enhancements in 2019, we're going to set the stage a bit. As a scientist, I have to build the puzzle pieces that I need to build this history of the universe. A Canada France telescope is multifunctional. We need to think about solution to improve the instrument, to make things work. One of the most impressive discoveries that we made here is an object that came through the solar system and we were able to catch it. So we're trying to predict the evolution of the universe for the future. So the Canada-France Hawaii Telescope saw first light in 1979. This is a SOLIDWORKS research company with a long history of innovation and discoveries. You can see a lot of their first here in this PowerPoint presentation. Today, CFHT remains a leader in the industry as being one of the most productive telescopes both on Earth and in orbit. So we were so excited when we found out that SOLIDWORKS was using this company and project to showcase the 2019 enhancements. I think we all feel a sense of pride when we see uh, Canada outside of our borders. So what this telescope is doing is taking amazing, amazing photos of deep space. Now, as we just mentioned, the CFHT is a leader in the industry. And uh, many of you are probably leaders in your industries and your products. To maintain that position, you need to be open to change and make sure you're at the leading edge of technology. So SOLIDWORKS was chosen for this project. What they're doing uh, is they're replacing their current 3.6 meter telescope with a new state-of-the-art 10 meter telescope named the Mauna Kea Spectroscopic Explorer. The reason for choosing SOLIDWORKS is that it's a complete platform with really tight integration between all the different solutions, bringing all the different departments together to create a true digital twin of the project to ensure that they can meet their demands of finishing construction by the year 2020. So this is the 27th release of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. We've broken it down into four key areas. The performance of the software, the features and, and attention to detail to get your jobs done quickly and easily. We'll also talk about the design ecosystem, how the data moves from one step to the next, getting you from design concept through to manufacturing and even onto selling in the most efficient way. We'll also talk about innovations. SOLIDWORKS is the industry leader so they are always bringing to the table greater and newer uh, technologies for you to uh, design and engineer. Let's start with performance. Every year, you guys are going ahead and adding more and more features to your parts, making them more complex. Your assemblies are getting larger and larger. And SOLIDWORKS needs to make sure that the system is going to perform well and support your designs. So in 2019, we're going to see some new enhancements on how we can manage these large assemblies. Let's take a look. This is how things behave in SOLIDWORKS 2018. A lot of times we'll be using this large assembly mode where we're going to degrade the graphics a bit. You'll see a little bit of flashing to hopefully augment the performance so you can get in and work where you need to quickly and easily. So we've removed the shadows, we've removed that. The, uh, the shininess, the, the real view look. If we disable it, the image is going to look a little nicer with the shadows and so on, but we're, with the performance being degraded a little bit, we get a little bit more choppy with these large assemblies. It's not a, the best user experience we want to have as a designer. Now let's go take a look at how this is going to behave in 2019. We're not going to turn on large assembly mode, and you can see that all the shadow effects, and look how smooth things are rotating. This is because we're taking full advantage of the GPU on your graphics card. With a side-by-side -side comparison, you can really see the difference, and I'm sure you can imagine how quickly and easily in 2019 you're going to get to where you need to be in your model and get down to work. So there's no settings. There's, you don't need to enable the large assembly mode. It's just accessing your hardware and taking advantage of it better than ever before to give you smooth and responsive working environments. Large Design Review is a tool that's been around since 2012. This was a, a tool to, again, help you open up and get great performance on open of large assembly models. 
It allows you to um, open them up very quickly and easily, but to give you, in 2019, we're going to give you new workflows to be able to actually do more than just a quick view and interrogate. We're actually going to let you do some assembly modeling. So we're going to so do a file open, large design review as you would in the past. And if anybody's not familiar with this, you have a chance here to see what, what benefits you have with large assembly design mode, sorry, large design review mode. What you're going to do here is be able to see the feature tree without all the features. You're going to see the parts and assemblies and be able to turn them on and off. Be able to, but because we're not loading as much information, it's very, it performs quite well. We can also start to take measurements, interrogate this model. Uh, it, other things we can do are things like section views to dig into more complex designs. Here we're going to start hiding some components to reduce the clutter and get down to work. Now in 2019, here's where it differs. We're going to enable assembly editing mode, which is a right click at the top of the assembly tree. So we're now loading a little more information for you to use. Things like planes, sketches, and most important here are mates. So now we're going to start to add to our design or change it. So actually, let's zoom in on this area here where the pumps are. And let's swap out a couple of these pumps. So we're going to delete out these current sub-assemblies. And then through standard insert procedures, we're going to insert the new assembly model and place it into our design. To position it quickly, we're going to use mates, the same way you would on a fully resolved model, remembering that this is still in large design review mode. In previous releases, we, we talked about magnetic mates. So when you have those standard components that always snap together in a similar way, we can save us ourselves a lot of time. So those are also available in large design review. So I can just snap those together quickly and easily. Another thing we have access to in large design review mode are configurations. So we can try different design ideas or variants on our parts and assemblies. We've done quite a few edits here, but again, you can see how well we're performing. And now we just need to bring back those parts we hid originally. And we want to save up all those design changes. Knowing that on this save, it doesn't matter whether it was, uh, if we open up in a fully resolved mode, mode, all those design changes at the assembly level are complete and in, 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 in with the file. So this is just taking large design review mode way beyond just a review tool. It's now an editing tool. Next, I'm going to bring Colin up to talk about some of our new assembly delighters in 2019. Thanks. So we've seen some really nice enhancements here in the way that we can organize our, um, organize our tree when we're using our assemblies. We can also now lock the rotation of our concentric fasteners. And we have good functionality that's been added for uh, making and manipulating our exploded views. When we take a look at an assembly like this, even in a relatively simple assembly, we can still accumulate a lot of mates. So now in 2019, we have the option to group mates by either status or to separate our fasteners. When we group it by status, it's going to separate our mates into folders. Firstly, all of our solved mates. Then we see all of our mates that contain errors. So this gives us really uh, clear information on where we may have problems in our assembly and allows us to resolve them quickly. Our next folder will show us all of our mates with over definition. So if we want to remove this over definition, we can simply suppress these mates, which will locate them in a new folder. Below this are mates referencing any missing components. And our last folder is any mates that are referencing inactive, uh, or excuse me, that are referencing fixed components and are then inactive mates. When we insert toolbox fasteners into our assembly, you may notice that by default, they're going to be under constrained. And this is because the concentricity of these fasteners is free to rotate. In 2019, an option is available to lock the concentric rotation of all concentric mates for fasteners with just one click, which makes them fully defined in space. There's also a system option to lock the rotation of any new toolbox fasteners as they're inserted. This is going to keep your assemblies fully defined so you know that all of your parts and fasteners are in the correct place. For this assembly, let's take a look at an exploded view that's already been made. 
In 2019, creating and editing these is going to be even easier. A new rollback bar is going to be available when working with exploded views, just like the rollback bar we would find in our feature manager. This can help us visualize step by step the explode sequence for our assembly. In this case, you may notice on the left that the end cap is exploding before the screws used to, held it, used to hold it in place. If we want to reorder these steps, we can simply drag and drop where our explode steps are. Continuing down, we'll notice that there is a stack of washers here that is unexploded. If we move into our property manager for our exploded view, you'll see that the rollback bar is also here in the exact same place it was previously. Now when we explode these fasteners, in 2019 we can name the step as we create it, and once it's done, it will appear above that rollback bar in our tree, just like new features would in our feature manager. Either from our property manager or our configuration manager, we can now suppress or unsuppress these explode steps as well. This is going to give us really nice feedback on how this assembly is going together in the order in which it can be exploded or collapsed. When we want to share this information with, uh, with either other people within our company or outside of our organization, sometimes it can help to export this as a video file. Animations now for exploded views can be saved in more file formats, including AVI, Flash, MKV, and MP4. So now we have a nice video file that we can share that shows this explode sequence. So these enhancements to our assemblies has really improved the way that we can view our data in our assembly tree. We know that all of our toolbox fasteners are going to be fully defined in space. And we know exactly where specific mates are going to be based on their definition. The defeature tool is a way that we can really simplify our assemblies. And in 2019, we have a new option to get very quickly to the simplified representation. Here's a really nice high detail model. Now, we want to simplify this. And there's a couple reasons why we may want to do this. Firstly, we may not need that full detail in our top level assembly, and we may want to see some performance enhancements. Or maybe we want to protect our intellectual property when we're sending this model out to a customer or a supplier. In 2019, the defeature tool has a new silhouette option, which has been added to help simplify the geometry based on the outlines of components and bodies. If we select this option, we'll start initially by selecting uh, various components that we want to not be simplified. So we'll select the components themselves. We can also select bodies if we wanted to. But for now, we're just going to choose no simplification. What this will do is copy the geometry and add it to a new part and a new window. So when we add this in, you can see that there's a new preview window. And all of those components have been added to a simplified representation of our assembly. When we rotate these, this view, our preview window is going to rotate uh, at the same time. Selecting these rollers can be done quickly by selecting identical components. So we'll select the rollers, maybe a couple of pins, this cabling, an end cap, and like I mentioned earlier, a body, this motor. So for these, we'll use the cylinder method to strip away all of the detail and just represent these parts as a simplified cylinder. And you can see they've been added to the right side of the screen. Our hex nuts, pivot hanger, and the control box can be simplified using the polygon outline method, which is going to extrude a polygon that fits nicely around the outline of the components. If we want a little more detail, like with this drive motor, we can use the tight fit option, where we'll specify a plane or face for the direction and then we'll get an extruded body that represents a tight outline of the selected component. So now we have a really nice simplified version of our assembly that we can save out as a part file. How are we going to do this? By simply clicking Next in our Property Manager once we're done with our simplification, we get some options, including saving this as a new document with a link maintained back to the original assembly. 
This is huge because we want to make sure that any changes that happen in our assembly are going to propagate forward into this simplified representation. We can also save this out directly to 3D Content Central if this is how we're sharing our files with our customers or suppliers. So this is really nice functionality to help improve that performance at the top level of our assembly. We can also make sure that our intellectual property is protected when we're sending this out to whoever we may be sending our files out to. So some really nice enhancements in 2019 for our performance. I mean, this is going to get you from A to B using SOLIDWORKS even faster than it was in 2018. Moving into the second section of our presentation, we'll talk about attention to detail. So actually making our parts and assemblies and uh, getting them out the door. And to talk about that is Scott. So we have a new uh, weldment environment named Structure System. It's an advanced set of tools that allows us to create lots of complex weldments without the, com the complexity that we had previously with having multiple features and, multiple, or, and only being restricted to 2D and 3D sketches. Let's take a look. I'm sure many of your projects have welded or framed structures, and SOLIDWORKS has this very strong uh, feature, weldments, to get that job done. We're just going to take that up a notch in 2019 where now if we, we can start with construction geometry more than just a 2D or 3D sketch, we can incorporate surfaces and planes as well. So now the first step is to enable the new structure system mode. Once on, now we can start to select items for the uh, primary members. Primary members would be your major components in a welded frame. So when we turn that on, what we're going to do first is select, in this case with a window, all the edges of these two surface bodies. In the property manager now, we have the selection created. If we go to the profile tab, this has the similarity to weldments where we pick from a standard, a shape, and a size. So just that easy, I just created 36 members going in all sorts of different directions all in one step. Next thing we want to do is make a slight modification. Let's select a bunch of the members that have been created and swap them out for maybe a different shape and a different size. So now we have round tubes for the verticals. Next, we're going to create more primary members using that 2D sketch we had in our design. So selecting the sketched lines, we can now again assign potentially a different profile with a different size again. There's six more members. Now we're going to create the secondary members, which are, we can use the planes as guides for location, but then just consecutively select primary members that you want to see the secondary in between. So again, just that quickly, I created another 12 structural members. Pick the size or shape and accept. Now if we start to look at these corner treatments, everything's been sort of just mitered and we need to check to make sure that it's what the connections we would like. Exiting the, system, uh, the structure system mode brings up the corner management tool. So for the basic ones, a lot of them will be created automatically for us. In this case, we've got a mitering happening in this corner. This corner is a little more complex and we want a little more control over it. So I want to make sure the top two members are mitering with the round tube having a flat or butt up cut underneath it. Some of the other ones where we had the secondaries coming into the primary, once again, you're seeing how they are automatically being coped into position, but I do have the flexibility to change them if I needed to. Once we exit the corner management tool, now we can do a final step, which is just a circular pattern to save us some time uh, duplicating these, uh, these webs around to the other five sides. So you can see how easy that came about. With just a few clicks, I only have three features in my tree to create this complex shape. So 2019 is a great new enhancement with this structure system, which is just really an extension to our existing weldment functionality. Let's look at our first part delighter. In situations like that weldment we just created, quite often we have a multi, but we want to check for interferences. So let's see how we do that in 2019. In 2018 and previously, you would have to insert this weldment into an assembly 
and run the interference check there. Now for new for 2019, if we go to the evaluate tab, you'll see the in interference check. So again, in the, in the part mode, we can still see those interferences now and be able to make a modification quickly and easily with a weldment member trim tool here. So really what this is all about is saving you guys steps. We don't have to insert this into the assembly. It's just streamlining your workflow, making it more intuitive and what you would expect to see uh, in SOLIDWORKS. Next feature we're going to talk about is tab and slot. I'm going to have Colin bring, come up for that. Thanks. So in 2018, the tab and slot feature was created. And this allowed us to create parametrically linked tabs and slots in either a single part, multi-body part, or assembly environment. In 2019, we've seen that productivity even further enhanced. Before, we had only the option to create a symmetric offset around our slot holes in all directions. Now in 2019, we can have an unequal offset for our slots. So perhaps we want our tab to be able to slide lengthwise in our slot. That's now possible. In 2018, all of our slots had sharp corners, and we would have to add in fillets or chamfers afterwards. These can now be included in the tab and slot feature. So we can have filleted corners, chamfered corners, or even circular corners. When creating a blind tab, we can now also ensure that our slot is going to be cut all the way through. So that's really helpful if we're going to be water jetting or laser cutting this part. When we had different groups of tabs, you know, it's going to be really useful now to link all of these groups together. So any parameters that we put in place for one is going to carry through to all the others. So if we do want to change these parameters, it's not necessary to go in and change them in all of the groups. In 2018, we've seen, uh, we saw a lot of enhancements for working better with mesh data. You know, more and more people are getting 3D scanners now, uh, whether it's for reverse engineering or for prototyping. Uh, and taking that scan data and using it in SOLIDWORKS is really important um, for progressing with our designs. In 2019, we now have enhanced use of this imported mesh data in terms of generating sketches directly from that data. We can also take appearances and transform them directly into 3D mesh geometry. This handle that we see originated as a piece of mesh data, and it was then converted into a solid. So let's take a look at how that was done by opening up a 3MF file, which is one of the many mesh file types that SOLIDWORKS can open and work with. Once we have imported our mesh data, we're going to use the new slicing tool that's available in 2019. This will create intersection sketches throughout the mesh body based on a reference plane, a number of planes to offset, and the amount of offset. So once we create that, all of our planes and sketches are going to be created automatically and organized into a folder. This is where maybe we want to move the location of any of these planes to capture key areas of design intent for our part. After hiding the mesh body, we can then use these sketches to convert into a solid. In this case, we're going to use a lofted surface to generate the outside of our handle, very easily repurposing this mesh data. Since we'll be designing this handle in two halves, the split tool can be used to create two separate bodies moving forward. Our next step is applying a logo to both halves of this part. We're going to make a sketch, and we're going to bring in a sketch block that we have saved with our logo from our design library. Now, this sketch block has multiple contours, and we want to project it in both directions. In 2019, projected curves support multiple open and closed contours within the same sketch and can be projected onto multiple bodies in bi directions. So in the past, this would have taken two sketches and four projected curves. In 2019, it's a single sketch and a single curve. Going back to our assembly, we're going to take a look at another enhancement when we're working with surfaces in SOLIDWORKS 2019. This power button is actually a surface model that has several holes and cutouts that need to be removed. Using the new delete hole function, we can select edges belonging to holes or these cutouts, and in one feature, 
just this quickly, we can have them removed and ensure that our model is watertight. Going back to our assembly now, we're a little suspicious that there might be some interference between this cable and the handle. So selecting those two parts and running a quick interference detection will confirm our suspicion. This is where we can apply a new partial chamfer or fillet in order to create clearance. Selecting an edge and selecting a partial chamfer allows us to control the offset from either the start or end of a chamfer or fillet. What's really cool is that we can use on-screen handles to actually drag and relocate the ends manually. This is going to work for symmetric fillets and chamfers and also asymmetric fillets and chamfers are supported too. This will greatly reduce the number of features required to create this geometry. Showing all of our parts, we're going to take a look at this grip on our handle. So this grip that you see here was created using solids. So it looks great, but there were a lot of features that were used, including ribs and thicken functions. All the geometry you see here is actually mesh data that was created using an image to define a pattern of bumps. So let's see how this works by creating one from scratch. We'll go to a configuration that doesn't have any bumps, and we're going to apply a an appearance to the part or face that we'd like to extrude from. Anywhere that we see light colors is going to extrude further away from the face, and anywhere that's dark is going to remain closer to the face. So once we have that image brought in and positioned the way that we want it to, we can start turning this into 3D geometry. We have controls for the mesh size and the offset, and after we have the settings dialed in the way that we like them, what we've done is quickly created a mesh body that can very easily be used in downstream processing for processes such as additive manufacturing or prototyping. Think about how long that would have taken to model with solids. So some really, really uh, awesome enhancements here for our parts. You know, just different ways that we can expedite that workflow when we're creating that geometry. And, you know, so many people are using 3D printers and 3D scanners now that working with mesh data in SOLIDWORKS 2019 is going to be even easier to do. Next up, we're going to discuss the user experience in SOLIDWORKS 2019. And to do that is Scott. Thanks, Colin. So from the very beginning, SOLIDWORKS has always had a huge focus on user experience, making it the easiest to learn, easiest to use, and the most intuitive software in the industry. That doesn't stop in 2019. We're going to show you great new ways to access your designs quickly and easily so you can get down to work. We're going to talk about the very important function of top-down design modeling with external references and how we can better manage those in 2019. And lastly, in this topic, the, the measure tool and the fact that we can use it whenever and wherever we need it. Let's take a look. So now in 2018 we brought in the welcome window which gave us access to recent documents. Users were asking to have more recent documents available so in 2019 you can have up to a hundred in this list. That's a lot of documents so we've also given you some filtering techniques. We can now filter down to just the drawings, just the assemblies or just the parts or even the top level assemblies. I think my favorite, though, is the fact that I can zero in on file names. So typing a, a name camera, I will focus in on any file that has the word camera in the file name. Let's open that up and get down to work. External references can be now seen within the dependency arrows in the feature tree. And we can also control them this way. So for example, this external reference, I can now lock or break the reference right here. Another way, a more traditional way, is to use the external reference dialog box. This has been totally redesigned to make it more intuitive and easier to understand. You can see now we've got the graphics showing the parts, the features, and how the external references relate to one another. If we start to highlight the items, you can see it cross highlights in the graphics space, giving me better understanding of what these external references are. 
We'd like to focus in on one of the parts here. So let's grab this baffle component and use the isolate button within the dialog. That hides the rest of the components so we can zero in on just that one. If we start to highlight its external references, we have a really good understanding that where these things are referenced out to. We want to break away this circular pattern, make it a standalone feature. So let's go down and break the reference. Exiting the dialog box now, we want to fix that dangling reference. So if we go down to the circular pattern feature, we simply need to select a new edge or face to define the, the center of this pattern. Now from here, we can go ahead and exit the isolate to bring back the rest of the components. We have one more design change to do here. What we have is a counterweight that needs to fit within this space. We need to maintain 50 millimeters. And if I go and start the modify box and realize that, hey, I don't know what size I need here, I can immediately start the measure tool and take that distance. Previously, we would have had to exit the modify box, go check the dimension, and go back into the edit mode. So measure can be used whenever and wherever it's needed. So the user experience, we're always trying to make those tools easier to access and more intuitive as you move through your designs. We're slowly starting to move away from the need for drawings, but we still are creating a lot of drawings. SOLIDWORKS knows this, so we're still adding more and more enhancements every year to the drawing environment. We've added a new section view. We've made it more flexible with our whole tables as far as how we tag things. We can now manage when more complex drawings update or rebuild. And lastly, we've added some nice functionality to the, the BOM output to make it more graphical for the people downstream using them. Let's take a look. So now in 2019, we have the new removed section view where we simply select the two coinciding edges of a model. No construction geometry required, and we simply place the view. It's as easy as that. When you are dealing or designing high precision parts, needing detailed tolerancing, you used to be able to have to have other symbols to drag and drop into our drawing. So ISO, standard ISO tolerance modification, modifying symbols are now included with the whole or the dimension feature. So we can simply go to the property manager and add on any symbology required, making sure that you can get those dimensions just the way you need them quickly and easily. Next, let's look at whole tables. Whole tables are just a great way to define or define a, the holes on a complex view without cluttering your drawings. So we simply select a starting center point or the origin, and then what faces we want to scan for holes. We'll place that in. New for 2019, though, is how we label those. The first option, new option, is, the, is one for toolpath, reduced toolpathing, which means that it's going to find the shortest distance between all the holes for manufacturing. Second one is radial, where we start from the origin and go from the closest hole to the farthest hole. A lot of requests have been to allow us to have custom naming of the tags, and you can do that now through the manual tagging option. Another quick way, if there's just one hole you want to slightly modify, just right-click and add a prefix to that individual hole. Now, as your designs get larger and more complex, you might want to control when the drawing is being rebuilt. So what we're going to do is pick one of these drawing views. And in the property manager, we're going to select to exclude from the automatic update. And to show you how this is going to behave, let's open up the part and make a design change. This is going to be really useful when you want to make a lot of quick little changes and not have to wait for a rebuild of a large, heavy drawing. So we'll change the thickness of this lower plate area. And as we go back to the drawing, it would typically update every drawing view. Here you'll notice that the drawing views that I've locked now have an orange crosshatch around it, giving me the control of being able to select that view and asking it to rebuild when it's appropriate. Last enhancement for, that we're going to talk about today is bombs. Bills and materials have always been a really strong area for SOLIDWORKS. Being able to create these lists, we've always had these really nice thumbnails for the SOLIDWORKS users to identify what do these parts look like. Well, now for 2019, we have an option when we export to an Excel file, we can leverage those icons. 
So in the Save As, we can now select the checkbox to say Include File Images, which now in the Excel file, we get a really nice, graphically rich looking bomb. So again, drawings are just adding more and more flexibility and more tools to make the drawing creation a very productive process. So that brings us to the end of attention to detail. Hopefully you've seen a lot of great new features that you can incorporate in your design flows to get your designs done quickly and easily. Just like to talk a little bit about what Javelin's been doing with our customers lately and what's uh, some big news that we had in this past year. There was a merger of two big companies in Canada. Javelin and Symmetrix came together to create one powerhouse 3D and additive manufacturing team. So Symmetrix is now a division of Javelin Technologies. This has brought us together the ability to provide you with the best in class 3D design tools as well as additive manufacturing and scanning capabilities and much, much more. So we reached the halfway point of this presentation. Uh, moving on to the next topic, which is our design ecosystem. We want to talk about all the other components of our innovation platform and how they all start to fit together and bring you more capabilities. Let's start with e-drawings. This has always been our go-to viewer for CAD, uh, CAD viewing. You know, this year we just bring more capabilities with configuration support, more file types, the ability to save out a 3D HTML, and finally the performance of e-drawings has been greatly enhanced. Let's take a look. So now if we go to the open dialog, you'll see that we have way more file types, Parasolid, Solid Edge, Asus, JT, and NX to, be at, to add to the already existing file types. We now support configurations. We were always able to look at configurations if we saved out an e-drawing file from SolidWorks, but now we're actually viewing the configurations in the native SolidWorks part or assembly file. Also in 2019, we have this new ability to save this out as a 3D HTML document. So in eDrawings Professional, this will give you a new way of sharing this content. So you can either post this page or even email it. The nice thing is there's no need to install software or plugins. It still gives you the same access to the feature tree so you can hide and show components, have the same ability you just saw accessing configurations, the ability to use the explode view that we saw earlier, and also the section view to be able to look deeper inside a more complex model. At the top of the interface, we have similar buttons to the standalone uh, interface as well. Things like the home button to bring us back to the beginning, the ability to play an animation, ways to zoom in, zoom out, and other graphical add-ins like adding ambient occlusion to the display. Another great enhancement in 2019 is the increased performance. We have 2018 on the left, 2019 on the right. So in 2018, I'm sure many of you noticed on a large assembly, you'd get that choppiness on a rotate. It actually snaps when it needs to start rotating. You also get the flashing of faces uh, when they you know, turn on and turn off, trying to keep up the performance to your, meet your needs. Now in 2019, you'll see that it's immediate responsiveness. As soon as you start rotating, it's going to behave, it's going to react. And we don't get the flashing or the hiding of parts to try and keep up that performance. It performs extremely well. So 2019 eDrawings should be your go-to tool for CAD viewing, whether that be for salespeople, guys on the shop floor, service people out on site, your customers. It's an awesome, fully robust CAD viewing tool. Treehouse is a feature that many of you have had for years, but just a lot of you don't know it exists. Simply go to your Windows Start button and do a search on Treehouse. It's a different way of starting and managing assembly structures. 2019, we brought in more control over the display of these trees. We can manage more information as far as metadata and so on. And we've also incorporated the same or similar functionality you saw from drawings, being able to incorporate thumbnails on a bomb output. Let's take a look. Now in 2019, if we go to options, we have the ability to hide those thumbnail icons. When you have larger assemblies, you might want to gain, regain some real estate on the display. 
For this one, we'll bring those icons back. The other thing we can do is all these files are currently using part numbers as, as naming conventions. For people downstream may not know what those part numbers are, let's choose to replace those with another metadata field, in this case, the description field. This makes it much easier to understand what these components are. Now, the great thing about Treehouse is that I can actually add new parts and change the structure that we're looking at. So if I grab from my templates a part file, we'll just drag and drop a new part onto this subassembly. When I pick on the part, I can now start adding more detailed information, like file properties. This dialog box looks just like the one in SOLIDWORKS now, so it makes it very easy for me to pick fields and fill in the information. Next thing I'd like to do is maybe share this structure in a different way, maybe as a BOM and make it an Excel-based bill material. So now in 2019, if we do that BOM export, we're now going to see that nice graphical thumbnail in the uh, export if you turn on that option. Much easier for downstream people to understand what they're looking at. So Treehouse just gives us greater flexibility in creating, managing, and sharing our assembly structures. SOLIDWORKS PDM is the best tool to start to tie all your different departments and anybody involved in your projects together. Some of the enhancements we're seeing in 2019 are, first of all, the viewer uses eDrawing, so we're going to leverage what you saw earlier as far as being able to access the configurations or multi-sheet in our preview pane inside Windows Explorer. We can also default our search values. A great example of this would be if I wanted to search on my entire vault and find all the files that have been checked out by myself or that have been worked on by myself. I don't want to have to type in my name or pick it from a dropdown every time I want to run that search. So now I could default it to my login name, my logged in user, which would save me that step. We also have access to configuration cut list information. So on the configuration tabs, I can be looking at, for example, the quantity of a weldment. Another way to automate steps. We can now automatically create flat pattern DXF files from our models. So all sheet metal parts, for example, may be on approval, get generated DXFs, and put into a folder ready for the shop floor. We have great contains and where use tabs. Now in 2019, we can hit the full right mouse button menu, where previously it would be a much smaller menu, allowing us to browse to that file and then be able to right click. So we're, again, we're just reducing clicks and having to work with the software. I get the information where I want it. Earlier in 2018, we added the addition of the integration into inspection, SOLIDWORKS inspection. That continues now in 2019 with the composer integration, which we'll talk more about later. So SOLIDWORKS PDM is your go-to tool to manage all this data and connect both departments and solution products. We're going to bring up uh, Colin now, talk about MBD. Thank you. So MBD is really the future of uh, communicating our designs uh, with, our with you know, whoever's manufacturing those parts. It allows us to put information directly onto the part files uh, instead of actually having to create a 2D drawing at all. So in 2019, we have nice new functionality in MBD that includes support for sheet metal annotations. Uh, as well, we have different ways that we can protect our intellectual property when we're actually sending out a 3D PDF. Uh, and we have increased, uh, uh, increased functionality for expediting downstream processes. So here we have a sheet metal part. And we're going to want to insert some bend notes onto this part. So these bend notes, we can just right click and insert them directly into the part file. Just like that. Now this might not be the best way to communicate this data. So now in 2019, we can capture all of these bends and communicate them through a bend table. This will insert a tag onto our sheet metal part and display our bend table right there in our window. Now we can take all of this information and capture it in a 3D view that's ready for export to a 3D PDF. 
Here we have a part that has some notes and additional part manufacturing information that we want to export as a 3D PDF. After we select the template that we would like to use, we're shown a nice preview now in 2019 that shows all of our custom properties populated where they should, including things like a part number, who designed the part, revision number, and our weight in this case. When we're sending this file out, it's very important to protect our intellectual property. And that's why in 2019, we have an option to show only graphical data for our part file. As well, we have the option to disable printing, editing, or copying of the 3D PDF once it's been opened. The addition of a password for anyone viewing this, PD, uh, this PDF is going to give us even more security. And if we need to overwrite any of these settings, a master password can accomplish that. So now once we save out this PDF and we open it, guess what's going to happen? We need to put in that password. So once the password's typed in, within Adobe, we can view our model in a 3D environment with all of our saved views. And as you can see, our permissions are restricted as we specified before we output the file. When working with derived parts, in the past, we had to recreate any of this PMI on that derived part itself. And this is uh, frustrating because derived parts provide us with an associated method of referencing back to that original design. In 2019, we can now copy any pre-existing uh, DIM and tolerance schemes into this derived part. We no longer have to recreate this PMI. This will lend itself very nicely into any downstream processes that require this information like SOLIDWORKS CAM or SOLIDWORKS inspection. So as we move forward into the future of design communication, uh, MBD is really the solution that's going to replace 2D drawings. And in 2019, it's going to be even easier for us to create, send out, and protect that information. All of this PMI can be used very nicely once we get into the manufacturing stage of our process. And that's where SOLIDWORKS CAM can come into play. So in 2018, SOLIDWORKS CAM was introduced as an integrated CAM solution that's included with all levels of SOLIDWORKS from standard through premium. This inclusion of SOLIDWORKS CAM standard includes two and a half axis milling operations for parts. In 2019, milling operations have been improved to help generate NC or G code programs even easier we can also support multiple machining strategies, have greater control over uh, end conditions for specific features, and we have a move command that can help us machine to a mean tolerance. We can now represent neck and tapered milling tools uh, to really help us visualize the machining process and make sure that our surface finish is going to be nice. As well, we can specify a corner slowdown. So this will adjust our feed rate as we're moving into and out of corners to ensure that those are going to have a nice finish on them as well. Let's take a look at how we can actually set machining strategies and affect different CAM features in the CAM feature tree. So all the information that we have within SOLIDWORKS CAM is stored inside the part file. And this is all controlled through what's called the technology database. So this is where information regarding all of our different machines, our tool cribs, and all of our company's machining practices is stored. So here you can see that we have a four axis feature set, which is going to show all of the strategies that SOLIDWORKS CAM is going to use when generating tool paths for specific features or geometry. We can customize this list as much as we want, changing the features to be machined in exactly the way that we want them to be. And then we'll set this as a default strategy for one of our machines. So once we have this list the way that we want it, we just hit Save. And after moving back to our machine list, we can select four axis and now choose this as almost a template for the machining strategies that this machine is going to use. There are also nice enhancements for productivity for everyday machining operations. For this hole, for instance, we can now set an offset to feed in from a specific distance or drill to a specific position regardless of the feature size. This is something that in the past might have been done with extra construction geometry that now is no longer necessary. If we have positional tolerance requirements, 
This may require us to offset our toolpath in relation to specific model geometry, like this slot. In 2019, we can now move cam features in x, y, and z directions by using the new move command. This can help us machine to mid tolerance for these positions without any extra or without extra work from a modeling perspective. So this integrated cam solution is going to help us generate those machining paths really, really quickly and easily uh, and store that information parametrically directly within our part files. If we choose to have more functionality than this, SolidWorks Cam Professional allows this information to be stored in assemblies and generate machine paths for 3 plus 2 axis and turning machines. In 2019, we saw a really nice enhancement for SolidWorks Cam Turning. So we were able to use tolerance-based machining for milling operations in 2018, but now we can use that part manufacturing information that's being placed on our part using MBD to generate specific tool paths based on both the size and range of tolerances that we have on these features. When we look at this turn part, we have specific tolerances that are set on the model that control the size of each of these features. And depending on the tightness of, this, of these uh, tolerance ranges and whether they're undersized, nominal, or oversized, we're going to want those to be machined a little bit differently. Running a tolerance-based machining is going to extract based on the size and range of those tolerances and create specific machine, uh, machine tool paths. In this case, we're going to have a rough and a finish operation. But what if we change these tolerances? That's going to take a lot of time to reprogram manually. But if we tighten up these tolerances, we can be sure that if we rerun tolerance-based machining, we're going to see any of these changes propagate into potentially new machining strategies. Once we make the changes and confirm, all we need to do is rerun tolerance-based machining. It'll pick up on these tolerances again, and if necessary, apply new machining strategies to them based on the preferences set in our technology database. In this case, because of tightened tolerances on this part, we're actually now going to be uh, using a rough and two times or two finishing passes to machine this part. So all of that work was done automatically. With that information directly on our model, we don't have to worry about programming all of these features manually in SolidWorks CAM. This can all be automated. And that's going to lend itself really nicely to downstream processes like things like SolidWorks inspection perhaps. And to talk about SolidWorks inspection is going to be Scott. Thanks. So, global, uh, so the inspection uh, program allows us to uh, you know, create those inspection reports and create balloon drawings uh, quickly and easily for quality purposes. This year, we're leveraging more detailed information with our report generation, things from the pop model. We now also support more model types, more model ent entities like the whole table you'll see. We also have a great way to group and ungroup those characteristics to get just the information we want into that report. Let's go take a look. So now when we start an inspection report, we typically start by filling out project information. And a lot of them will come from drop-down lists. New for 2019, though, is this custom property area where I can add as many uh, custom properties, linking it to information that's already in the drawing or part. So in this case, we'd like to pick up the checked by and link it to the uh, checker's name in the drawing file. We'd also like to add the material to show in the report. And this information I'll grab from the part file itself in its metadata. Now once we have that selected, our next step is start to scan the drawing for characteristics. So dimensions would be typical, but now for 2019, we now include also uh, the whole tables. So now you'll see how all the whole, line, whole table items are being uh, ballooned, as well as all of my dimensions. We've redesigned the characteristic list a little bit to make it easier to find and get information from it to zero in for, to make any sort of modifications. First thing we want to do is take this whole call out and split the bubble up into multiples. So let's ungroup. So that now we get individual balloons for the two, other two holes and also the different aspects of the hole as far as size and depth. We can relocate those easily to be more clear. 
We can also go into the characteristic list again and tweak any of the options. For example, this value for 20, we want to show it as a key value, changing the balloon style. Now we can go back and regroup if we'd like, because this is all about one whole type. So let's make the numbering system a dot system. So it's 18.1 through 18.5. Final step is to export to an Excel file. This is where the benefit of SOLIDWORKS inspection is really seen, because with a click of a button, you have a completed Excel file ready to do the inspection. So this is just giving us new workflows and allowing us to access more information that's already there in the drawings and parts for your inspection reports. SOLIDWORKS Composer is your tool to go to for technical documentation content. We've redesigned the interface to have newer, fresher icons. Uh, we also have a, use a new uh, command search to find those commands quickly and easily. The animation libraries have been enhanced too, so I can quickly swap out and change uh, and modify those items quickly and easily from the timeline. The annotation tools like Measure and Arrow have also been updated to give me more control. We can now have custom import profiles so that we are ensured that every time we bring in a data set, it's always going to appear the same way to keep consistency within the company. Importing the product manufacturing information, or PMI, like you saw with Colin from model-based definition, is now available in Composer. Also, SOLIDWORKS assembly envelopes. We also mentioned it, but again, Composer now has tight PDM integration with a PDM tab to get all of our file management done within the interface. Let's take a look. So in Composer, we have fresher icons, but I think the more important one is this new command search to select to find the new select adjacent parts. So with the one item selected, I can quickly select everything else that might be touching that part. We've always had selection sets, and I'm going to create one for that selection, but we have more control here as well. We can actually drag and drop these selection sets within one another to create more combinations of selection sets. From here, I'm going to reuse that same select adjacent parts command to pick up on even more parts beyond my current selection. Now that we have all those items selected, I'm going to use Composer's great ability to hide everything that's not selected and only show the selected items. From here, we want to tweak the view to get just the look we're going for, maybe adding some transparency or changing colors. Then we want to save the view. The view palette here on the left has also been enhanced. First of all, we don't want to have views unnecessarily update without us knowing. So we can actually right click and lock those views so that does not never happens. Also, we have the great uh, named views or intelligent views inside Composer that control specific aspects of the view. Now in 2019, it's a simple icon in the bottom right hand corner to designate it as such. Searching, we've always been able to search on geometry. New for 2019, we can search on collaborative actors as well. So if I search on this dimension, this linear dimension, I can now focus in on it very quickly and easily. There's a lot of items on a, a dimension like this that I might or may not want to show. So in 2019, we have more control to hide the components that we don't want for this view. At this point, I can search, close off the search dialog and save this as another view. SOLIDWORKS also has great, sorry, Composer also has great um, arrows that are more graphical. And a request that comes in very often is the fact that we want to have those arrows always maintain the same size no matter what zoom level we might be at to keep consistency from image to image in your documentation. So now there's that option in the property manager. So no matter where or how I zoom, the arrows will always stay the same size. SOLIDWORKS Composer is great at creating these 2D images but it's also really good at creating anim animations to show maybe a procedure on how to assemble or uh, service your, your products. So if we scrub through the animation, you can get an idea of the type of content you can create. Now, a couple of releases ago, we added these new animation workshops where we can sort of capture a, a commonly used item, like this flashing of a part and scaling of it to really emphasize what we're talking about in the instructions. Now, in 2019, we can now edit those more easily. In the panel on the right, I can very quickly remove the color from this and save that up to the time bar. Previous releases, we would have had to delete and recreate those steps. So we've done a lot of changes to this model now. So now we'd like to save it up and make sure it's checked in safely in our PDM system. So no longer do we have to leave the interface. The tab is now integrated into Composer being able to do the check-ins or check the data card 
and we're done. If we want to start a new file or bring in more data sets, I would go to the File Open dialog box. Now it's going to default to the last file type, making it more simple if you use common uh, file types. We also have the Import Profile Manager, which allows me to have presets to make sure that I have consistency between imports. We also have that nice ability now to bring in bills and materials, uh, the PMI data, as well as assembly envelopes into Composer. So Composer is a great authoring tool to create technical documentation uh, for any of your needs across your, your company. Next, let's talk about the uh, SOLIDWORKS electrical product, and Colin's going to come up to talk about that one. Thank you. So in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2019, uh, dynamic connectors are going to be adding one more layer of definition for configurations and insertion options. This allows for more design flexibility, making it easier to plan your harness design by either hiding, using round corners, or simply using the zigzag option for representing a part connector. Uh, our more advanced users will be happy to note that the reporting tool has updates allowing you more granularity. The list of variables available on, on the right-hand side are including application databases, keywords, and extended views, allowing for even more customization. The drawing reports now have hyperlinks available at the project level, which makes it much easier uh, for design cross-verification. One of the biggest collaboration developments for 2019 is the routing process between schematic, 3D, and a flattened representation. And as well, icons have, been, uh, have had their resolution increased to work even better on 4K monitors. As I mentioned, routing is really more streamlined now in its process for setting up a part. 2019 uh, supports inline devices now, such as butt connectors, to help splice wires together. In the schematic portion, this is going to be defined as a symbol with a terminal passing circuit. This allows for accurate real-world representation of designs when we're connecting multiple gauges of wire together. We place an R point between electrical C points, and in 3D, this splice application is now supported through the usual route process. So when we bring this out and view it in 3D, we can now easily route and splice these multiple, uh, these different gauge wires together. Very nice. In 2019 as well, there's a partial coverings manager, which is ideal for defining fixed length items like labels or coverings that are only required partially. The flatten root feature uh, improve, uh, improvements will save time and effort as the creation process is adapted to handle electrical file sets, templates, and sheet formats. Uh, the, this really streamlined improvement will deliver more accurate, clean tables for a flattened representation. SOLIDWORKS PCB uh, is a really great way to help connect the electrical design of a PCB with the mechanical design that surrounds it. In 2019, uh, holes can be made in just one sketch or pattern instead of just making one hole per sketch. We can bring silkscreen, solder mask and paste, copper traces, we can bring those in as decals or as CAD data. For the board thickness, Electrical and mechanical CAD will be able to see an accurate representation of this thickness on both ends, and this information can be changed on either end as well. Either the electrical or mechanical CAD can flip components or lock components on the board as well. And in 2019, there's now a free PCB viewer. This was a customer-driven development request uh, that's really going to help complement the PCB design processes. Uh, so if you do have things that you want to see in any module of SOLIDWORKS, uh, definitely submit those as enhancement requests because they do get implemented. SOLIDWORKS simulation allows a, a lot of different modules that can help us validate and test our designs before they're even manufactured or sent out. And in 2019, we see some really nice enhancements for pin connectors, uh, for reusing data between different studies when we copy these studies, uh, and we can ensure higher quality results now with our, remote, with our remote loads and masses. For our pins, 
We can now specify 10 cylindrical faces in a single pin connector in nonlinear studies. In 2016, connecting these 10 uh, faces would require nine pin connectors. 2018 allowed only one pin connector to do this, but only in linear static studies. In 2019, this extends to nonlinear as well. For distributed couplings, we can guarantee more control and accuracy with what are called weight factors, which are going to help accurately represent real world situations and specifics for your specific uh, problem. There's one uh, module for SOLIDWORKS simulation that was introduced in 2018 that's a really cool type of optimization that's called topology. So this is not a parametric optimization. It's changing dimensions or thicknesses in your model according to your inputs. That functionality is certainly there in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. This is more of an organic uh, design optimization that's going to find an entirely new design form based on your inputs. And in 2019, we can now control this uh, design study using frequency constraints and factor of safety constraints, which is huge. So let's take a look at this. In 2018, we were limited to only using stiffness and weight to control our topology studies. When evaluating design failure, frequency response is a very common issue that comes up in different circumstances. So now, in our topology study, we can specify a frequency constraint, which involves specifying either a single or multiple mode shapes, or specific frequency ranges to stay within or completely exclude. As well, now we can specify a factor of safety constraint. So this is a really nice way to be able to um, narrow down where we can actually remove material as a part of this topology study, because often a factor of safety is going to be our limiting factor when we're running our simulation studies. Once we have this output from topology in 2019, now we can export it to a smooth mesh body. So this is a, a, a piece of data that now we can take away and we can use in many downstream processes. Maybe something like additive manufacturing. You know, if we want to take this part now and 3D print it, that's something that we can do directly from our topology study. So this is a way to help automate that process to get us to the ideal geometry. You know, it's not always something that's clear um, that we can just you know, kind of guess at. Um, this is going to help us really get there quickly and efficiently. SOLIDWORKS flow simulation saw some great enhancements in 2019. The first one we'll talk about is the heat flux plot. So here we can display how much heat actually goes from one component to another by conduction as a graph. We can also visualize any heat that's left to convection or via radiation. And these components can be grouped so that the heat is calculated as total heat for all of the components. The pie charts you see for incoming and outgoing heat are going to help us understand the balance of heat. Surface parameters can be calculated now in a section plane, and these can be linked to a cut plot. So like you see here in this image, if a section plane divides the model into several closed contours, the parameters can be calculated separately for each contour. We can also use complex mathematical functions like integral, min, max, average, and so on, and logical expressions like if statements, more than, less than, to help us define custom visualization parameters. So with this, imagine being able to calculate an area, for instance, where a desired parameter is greater than a specified value. From the boundary condition dialog, we can now select goals, which will be automatically applied to the condition's reference face or body. This goal is linked to the boundary condition, so any change to the reference in the condition won't need to redefine the corresponding goal. If we remove this condition, it will remove the goal associated with it. Flow simulation is one of those products that uh, ties really nicely in with other things like, for instance, SOLIDWORKS PCB. You know, if we have a, uh, a PCB, it's going to be generating heat off specific components, and it's often going to be in some sort of enclosure. So how is heat going to flow around those components, and how is it going to exit the system, or is it going to stagnate, and are we going to see particular failure, failures? That's something that we can evaluate with SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Moving on, we'll discuss SOLIDWORKS plastics. So here, if we're working with any sort of injection molded plastics, 
we can evaluate those designs and make sure that they're going to fill and harden properly before we actually send out to get expensive molds made. In 2018, when we set up things like injection points and control valves, we would have to do this on the node within our mesh. Sometimes that node didn't really fall where we wanted it to. Now we can use geometry in our model to specify these boundary conditions. Injection points, control valves. If we want to specify specific mold wall temperatures, we can do that on specific faces or just select our part itself. And we have mesh control over specific areas that we choose. So if we have areas of concern in our plastic parts or areas that are giving us uh, problems historically, we can now refine that mesh to get greater detail. As well, if we want to clear our study tree, we can do it with just a right click at the top of our study tree and then say clear. We no longer have to go section by section to start from scratch. So this is a fully integrated plastic uh, design evaluation tool. Something that's going to be taking our design and evaluating how that is actually going to be created in the plastic injection molding process before we get any molds even made. And all that information is stored directly within our SOLIDWORKS file. That brings us to the end of our design ecosystem. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's a pretty extensive range of functionality that's going to be incorporating multiple departments from across a company. You know, it's not just the engineers who are going to be accessing this data. Everyone can access the CAD data and contribute to it as well. That brings us to our last section, which covers innovations. So how is SOLIDWORKS actually bringing their technology into the future? And to discuss that is Scott. Thanks, Colin. So in the last couple of releases, we started to introduce touch devices and gesture sketching as a new way to start your designs. So in 2019, we're just extending that even further with, by bringing in new capabilities with new touch hardware and the support from new sketch entities. One of the, my favorites, I think, though, is the handwritten dimensions and how we can actually dimension up a sketch through these touch and gesture uh, sketching capabilities. Lastly is how do we interact with a model in a more interactive way with touch devices. Let's take a look. So now in SOLIDWORKS, we always navigate around our models using zooming and panning, usually with a mouse. Now when a touch device comes into play, we have different ways of doing this. One is with the new Microsoft Surface Dial, which is supported in 2019. So we put the dial on the surface anywhere, a click will give us access to the tools, and then we just dial in, whether that's the zooming, the panning, or rotating of our model. But just a more interactive way to get down to work quickly and easily. When we start adding design ideas, we can now use pens and choose colors and thickness. We brought this in in 2018, but 2019 is just a little more intelligent as far as this type of shape. If I just sketch with a stylus, this complex shape, it's going to automatically get recognized as a spline. If I need to tweak it further now, it's very easy using the uh, polygon of the spline object. We'd add this, more features of this, start building up the model. Other new enhancements for recognizing these gestures is the slot entity type. So if I basically draw a slot, it's going to recognize this shape as a SOLIDWORKS sketch slot object. We'll add on a couple of those. Next thing I want to do is start adding more detail, more definition and size here. So I simply need to select the item and then right on the screen draw the value. SOLIDWORKS will recognize this and apply a driving dimension to the model. So it's a simple select the entity, write the number, and it gets applied. If we were drawing something like a circle here, it's already selected, so immediately draw the number and it is applied just that easy. Now, if we'd like to start interacting with our models in a touch environment, we can now go in and let's take a look at the sub-assembly. To put the parts together, I can again use this touch device. Just a smart mate and a double click on a face and a single click where to mate it to, and the parts come together. We'll do that one more time. A double click on the first face, a single click on the second face, and accept the mate. If you want to test the motion in your assemblies, again, through a touch device, it's a drag on the screen and really have a more interactive uh, environment to test these designs. So touch devices are just the new way of designing and engineering, and SOLIDWORKS is making sure it provides the support for you to do it. 
3D markups is another great tool to start to freehand on notes and keep it contained within the model. So we now have freehand 3D sketch notes and a few different ways we can actually share that to other people in, the, in your company. Let's take a look. So here in this model, if we go to the views, you can see some previously created uh, markups. We're going to create our own from scratch on this exploded view. In the feature tree, you're going to see now a new folder called markups. So to start this process, we just simply right click on the folder and say create a new markup. Again, we pick a pen color and thickness and usually through a stylus method, we're going to start drawing on our notes. So let's say we want to put on the torque settings for these nuts. We simply circle them out and put on the value we want to mark up. These cotter pins, we're going to swap these out for something different. So we'll just put on a change note. If we want to emphasize something differently, maybe choose a new color, maybe a different thickness, and continue with your markups. Once we're complete, similar to a sketch, we simply close down the markup, which saves it into the feature tree. At this point, you might want to rename it so it's more easily found and accessed again. If you want to share this with somebody outside who does not have SOLIDWORKS, a right click, we can save the markup out as an image file, or another nice method is saving it out to a PDF file. This is a great way to keep everything in an electronic format and be able to share this and collaborate uh, effectively, maybe even in your PDM system, so that again, it's a central location. There's no more need to uh, print out papers and, and mark up and lose the, your markups. Uh, it's all centrally and easily accessed in electronic format. SOLIDWORKS Visualize is our amazing rendering tool. It had some enhancements actually that's worth talking about now in the middle of 2018 at Service Pack 3, and it was the artificial intelligence denoiser. This tool allowed us to really reduce rendering times. It's taking renders that may have taken uh, an hour down to potentially six minutes, or maybe a minute long render is now only six seconds. It's a huge time saver. We now also in 2019 brought in into Visualize Professional uh, real-time physics, allowing us to make a more natural scene. For example, these stack of plates. If I apply an earthquake or a jitter uh, mode to it, it will shift them up a little bit to make it look more natural. We also added gravity, where, for example, if I want to show how these mugs uh, would fit into the sink, instead of me having to position them manually, I apply gravity and let the computer do the rest of the work. So they have a more natural look and feel and save me a ton of time. So that could be for an animation or just setting up a static to a scene for the rendering. If you're in the automotive industry, we've now added a driving simulator. So you can take your vehicles and apply real-world physics to it. So we can tell the, the visualize what the components are, which is a wheel, which is the suspension. We have some preset driver behaviors, and we can also totally create them from scratch. Once the settings are complete, we can now use a keyboard en entry or use a gaming controller to control our vehicle to create the animation. The output is just amazing. We're also now supporting more universal libraries for materials. So NVIDIA is one of them. The NVIDIA MDL material library is just a great way to that you can now save time on creating materials and just download and use them. We're also supporting, we now have video decals in Visualize Pro. So when you're creating that animation of a, maybe a computer screen or LCD on the wall, simply select a video that you have on your hard drive and apply it as a decal. So SOLIDWORKS Visualize is your way to bring your designs to life and create some amazing marketing material to help sell your products. SOLIDWORKS 2019 also brings in a lot of new interactive and virtual reality uh, enhancements to be able to support things like the Microsoft HoloLens. So, you know, first one we want to look at is the eDrawings environment that immediately supports this VR or AR environment. And SOLIDWORKS also now has an extended reality exporter that we'll talk more about. Let's take a look at eDrawings first. 
So in e-drawings, we can immediately open a model in a VR or AR mode. And then we simply have to select what's the floor, what is the uh, sky, and then you get dropped into the environment. Throw on your headset and take a look around. You can use your handsets to move around in the environment by just clicking to teleport from point to point. This same technique would be used to climb up the stairs or get to a higher platform. Take a look around, see what you see. Is there any interferences? It's a new way to interact and check on your designs. If it, the other handset you may have could be actually in, uh, interacting with the environment. So I can actually pick up parts and assemblies and move them about. SOLIDWORKS also now has a new exporter. It's an export to extended reality, uh, which is now going to save out the geometry, the textures, and the appearances for you to be able to create uh, other types of environments with other packages. So again, it's all about reusing your CAD data for downstream purposes. So SOLIDWORKS is just bringing you uh, and supporting all this great new technology with headsets and AR, VR, uh, allowing you to do amazing things with your designs. So that's sort of wrapping us up. You know, we, we've seen a lot of great enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2019, and this is just scratching the surface. As we said, every year we bring at least 250 plus enhancements, and these are just a few of the top picks we wanted to show you today. So covering performance, the features you need, the design ecosystem, and really cool new innovations. Mm -hmm.